aside from the obvious of it being an absolute masterpiece, um, I love the plot. I love the mixture of humour and horror, which is well executed. Why did you choose Get Out? Yeah, well, I'll first start by agreeing complete with you. Like, I don't think I appreciated how much of a base it is a masterpiece it's, of a yeah. film. Like, mm-hmm. I think the first time I watched it, I was just like, cool, this is like what the hype is about. And then you go back and watch it and go, how did they do this? you know, in terms of pacing, everything like, cause it's like really like classic horror film style. Mm. I mean, mean, like the fact that no one dies for most of the film, like that is not something you get away with in like modern horror film. Yeah. I think that's why when people do die, it's really, it's a climax. Do you know what I mean? Because they've like caught up to it. Yeah. And there's like you say, the balance of comedy, like it's got comedy in it without that ever detracting from the tension and the sort of horror aspect of it. It's great. The reason I talked about this is, the short answer is it's very relevant to my life. Like a large part of my life is essentially the non-murdery bits of Get Out. I was about to say, I'm very worried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't worry. I, I haven't I haven't done the, uh, you know, if we chopped off like the last 40 minutes or so of the film anyway. Yeah. Because um, I think obviously it's, you know, can end up sort of saying it's quite difficult to express some of these things, but if you're particularly doing my job and mm-hmm. then at various other stages of my life, you yes. find yourself in quite white spaces. Mm-hmm a huge amount of the time and that is probably for multiple quite complicated reasons but it's almost like those situations beget further situations that place you in those situations oh, yeah. to yeah. the point where particularly if you're in medicine like and particularly if you're doing academic medicine you're yeah. surrounded by white people all mm. the time yeah um, and obviously I should point out, you know, this time second generation in this because my dad uh, is married you know my mum's white yeah. uh, so obviously that's further complicates that I was going to say have they watched this movie and I love how the key Stanfield only had like a small bit in that film but it's mm-hmm. probably one of the most iconic moments you know when he's like nose is feeding and stuff and he really mm-hmm. stands out I'll probably put him on the map for the rest of us to kind of see big big fan of him oh I'm a massive fan of him until you google him and realize he's 29 regardless of anything I may have done in my life I'm still not sort of successful enough not to be bitter when I see someone 29 years old Oh, you know, achieved. yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's achieved what he. I mean, you know, you're a doctor. Just, I feel like don't don't put yourself down. Come on, like that's yeah, I'm, I'm over the hill now. I'm thirty. I'm thirty. I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say how old I am, but I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm over thirty. <laughs> the worst thing as well about this, again, I shouldn't admit this, is that you know when Lakeith, when I mean, you see him later on wearing yes. that, like, it's like you know, it's like I would wear that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Again. I love that. I feel like there was a few people that were like, "Hmm, that's exactly yeah, he's, what even even as a sort of brainwashed uh, <laughs> and what in regards to what message he's trying to say, it's just like I am considering wearing a straw boater at the next <laughs> social engagement I go to, if that's my sellout credentials. So other situation where you kind of end up in that is where people nudge you towards the only other black person in a situation and be like, yeah. "Hey, you've got to meet, you got to meet Dave." He's, <laughs> Do you not know? Do you not do know? You exactly. Know? <laughs> How do you not know? You live both live in South London. How do you not know? No, that? exactly. I mean, you, you were not at the last meeting. You're, <laughs> you're, you're on different shifts. Yeah. Have you experienced anything? I don't want to say anything like that because it's not. No, no, but I think I definitely but, no, I definitely have in the sense like being mixed race or the term racialized as black, I think is useful because when you're going to meet someone's parents, you yeah. are the black guy they're bringing home. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. You know, and have you expression. said have you told them have you told them I'm black have you I'm ever- sure I've had that conversation before but you know when it becomes such a normal thing or you kind of assume and you sort of <laughs> try and gauge not even through overt conversation but yeah. like so, so oh have they seen a picture of me <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're active they're active on Facebook you know there's that picture of us last week do tag, uh, in that do one tag one me in that one yeah exactly mm-hmm. so I went to uni in London so when you're dating someone um, in London you're just part of normal cosmopolitan yeah. London, but you know, shock horror, everyone that goes to UCL or a good number of people, they come from the home counties. Yes. Yeah. So when you go home to meet their parents, uh, then you're, that was <laughs> speak. <laughs> Um, now, if almost on cue, that would be speak of the devil. Uh, <laughs> my girlfriend <laughs> just uh, tried, wandered. <laughs> I, talk about this on stage but being well the blackest person in you know a very white school for a period <laughs> um like you know you come with a lot of pressure it's like right this is the new the new the new recruit from catford uh the football you know the the, the, the football team just rubbing their hands they're like <laughs> you're gonna be so sick yeah and i am not that guy like i am bad at football
They're like, why aren't you like Ian Wright? Like, aren't you? No, exactly. Yeah, what, no. <laughs> what happened to you? Yeah. 